Good day, East Hampton, Sag Harbor, and community. Welcome to our beloved Bay Street Theater. Today, we have a very special, beautiful, mm -hmm. and very talented guest, Hi. Dornette Darden. Hi. Dornette is the lead vocalist of the Who Do Loungers. Mm -hmm. Blues, funk, and a sprinkle of jazz. Yes, ma'am. Welcome, yes, Dawnette. Hi. How Pla are you? Hi, Sandra. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you, and happy Easter. Yes, happy Easter. Yeah. Dawnette, yeah. I would like to um, say that you and I had the uh, pleasure of meeting one another. Yes. Not too long ago. We were actually here at the Bay Street Theater filming yes. a documentary, Music is the Bridge, soon to be released. I can't wait to see it. Yes. I really can't. <laughs> I'd like to ask you, um, in lieu of the documentary, what does music mean to you? And how does it affect your soul? Okay, music means to me uh, bridging, music is a universal language, first of all. And what it means to me is everything. I do nothing without music. It is the vibration throughout my day, um, it is how I, communicate and give joy to other people, um, especially audiences. Um, music is soothing, music can make me hyper, music can make me feel in a loving, intimate mood, even though I'm not in love. <laughs> you know, you put on a piece of music, oh, I feel sexy, you know? If I had that, man, this is what we would, whatever, too. <laughs> And uh, music is everything, it's universal, and it also can bring you back to times in your life that you were happy, sad, um, stupid things, not stupid things, but events like picnics and, and, and uh, going to theme parks and you remember what you heard in the car, you know, things like that. It's a timekeeper. Yes, well that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Um, I know that you began singing as a very young girl. You had mentioned to me that you used to sing in your basement. Yeah. You sang at church. Yep. You were part of the choir. Yep. Speak to us about what inspired you as a young girl to start singing. I just did. I just did. I didn't share this with you in the last interview. When I was a little, little girl, my mother comes from a, a family of six. She's the oldest of five brothers. And my grandmother's house was always filled with people. And I remember going downstairs in one of my uncle's rooms and one of his friends was sitting there and the song, Apples, Peaches, Pumpkin Pie, came out. And I knew the song. So I went downstairs and I just started singing it. And this guy's eyes, and he went upstairs, he's like, Wesley, Wesley, your niece can sing, your niece can sing. And I was three, wow. That's so, amazing. Yeah, that, that was the very first time that I knew that I, you know, that was my first. At three. Since it is Easter today, and you loved singing at church as a young girl, will yeah. you share a gospel hymn with us, a few stanzas? Yes, I will. Um, I'd and like, what will it be? I'd like to do His Eyes on a Sparrow. I did this song uh, when my grandmother passed away uh, two years ago, June 4th. I did it at her funeral, June 6th. And it's, what, it's the song that I sing at family funerals for some reason. <laughs> But um, his eye is on the sparrow, and it goes like this. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely? 
and long for heaven in home when Jesus is he's my portion a constant friend is he his eyes on the sparrow and I know my God watches over me. I sing because I am happy. You know that I sing because I am free. And I know that he watches over me. Wow. Thank that you. That is truly beautiful. Thank you. Very inspirational song. Yeah, it it's is. I'm perfect for today. Thanks Thank you so for sharing Andrea. that. <laughs> so, as we can tell, you certainly have an instrument. There's no question about Thank it. Thank you, Sandra. And... <laughs> I know you said to me that you, as a teenager, committed yourself to being a performer, to true. being an artist. That's, that's true. And you ensured that you went on to a performing arts college. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to talk about now is what your journey was like after college, your musical journey. My musical journey was very interesting. I. Um, Again, at the time when I graduated college, I didn't know if I wanted to be in the theater, you know, because I did the dance, acting, singing thing. I wanted, you know, I was a triple threat, but at that time it was not as in vogue as when I was growing up. You know, when I was growing up, it was uh, Bubbling Brown Sugar, uh, The Wiz, Dream Girls. When I got out of college, it was the music industry, okay, the record industry. And at the time, the pulse was always uh, three black girls up front, SWV, Destiny's Child, whatever, three or four black, and the rhythm section was white. Okay. And I um, was in church, and I went up to the altar, we had an altar call, and I said to God, help me start my own band. And he did. And it was me, my sister, and one of my very, to this day, best girlfriends, and we called the band Initial Charge. Great, great, great name. Yeah. Yep. And I know that you had the opportunity at that time to travel abroad. Yes. How did that happen? Oh. I remember that Paul McCartney or John Lennon, one of the two, said that when the Beatles started, they didn't play a whole lot of places. They, I remembered that. And they said they played like one or two places and they would get a following. So I said, you know what? That's all we need to do. We'll play two places and we'll get a following and let's just see what happens. And we did. We played a place called the Funky Fish in Bayshore mm -hmm. and a place that used to be called the Dakota Rose in Amityville. And sure enough, every to this day, musicians come up to me and say initial charge. Wow. And that's great. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. And somebody from East Hampton, mm -hmm. his name was Al Cuffey, came to Amityville and asked us if we'd like to go to Munich, Germany. And all expenses paid, uh, five-star hotel, uh, great pay. And he sent us, and it was the only thing we had to do was get our passports. It was the wildest trip. Then we get back to New York, and he sent us to Austria, where I learned how to ski in somebody's driveway and never learned. But anyway, <laughs> it was great. It was great. Um, so yeah, initial charge had its successes. That's great. Yeah, and uh, I know that eventually, then it led you to your band, New Dawn. Yeah, I I, I journeyed with quite a few bands. Um, always the front person. Thank God, but and, and very blessed with that. And um, New Dawn came. I'll, I didn't share this in the last interview. I was I was supposed to not be here. I was supposed to die. <laughs> wow. And I was in the hospital, and I was undergoing a surgery. And I said to God before they put the anesthesia, they were about to put the anesthesia, shoot me, and I'm two pine nothing. And I said, God, if you get me through this, I promise you. I will not waste this. I mm. promise you I'll come back to life with a vengeance. And I got through it. So when I got through it, I started my own band. 
And when I started my own band, I searched to be out here. And I found a promoter who actually put me, my first, my first show was in this theater. Mm -hmm. Yep, with uh, New Dawn. Fabulous. Yep. Can you share a song that's dear to many of our hearts? <laughs> California dreaming. Everybody loves the California dreaming. Yes, I will share that. I will be glad to share that song because I was very proud of that song with that band. Um, it's originally by the Mamas and the Papas, but we arranged it our way. Um, All the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. I went for a walk on a winter's day I'd be so safe and warm If I was in L.A. California dreaming On such a winter's day I stopped in to a church That I passed along the way and I got down on my knees I got down on my knees and I pretended to pray you know the preacher he likes it cold cause he knows I'm gonna stay California dreaming on such a winter's day, oh, oh, oh yeah. All of the leaves are brown and the sky is so gray. You know, I went for a walk on a cold winter's day. If I was in L.A., California dreaming on such a winter's day, oh, oh, yeah. Thank you. Beyond beautiful. Thank you. Beyond beautiful. Thank you very much. So, Dornette, I'd like to... Uh, Talk about the next song you're going to share with us. Okay. Midnight at the Oasis. Yeah. That song evokes sexuality. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it was the record that was played more times for in its era ever. <laughs> and it evoked and spurred pregnancies. Did it? Yeah. Uh, so you're sharing with me something it's I never knew. It. Yeah. So tell me, what is it about the song that moves you so much? Why do you love to sing it? Okay, um, well, I did that song with New Dawn, and um, Midnight at the Oasis, when I was growing up, was always on the radio, W-A-B-C, whatever. And uh, it used to give me the willies as a kid, because I kind of knew what she was talking about. You know, she was talking about sex. Yes. <laughs> and, and telling this guy how, you know, she'll turn him out, you know. And um, as Cat I got, is your friend, and, yeah, you know, kick up the yeah, dust and, and uh, you don't need no, and you don't need no harem, honey. Well, I'm by your side. That's like deep, <laughs> right? And um, as I got older, the song went away, but I always knew the song. Okay. And with New Dawn, my drummer, my then drummer, um, Dave Giacone, said, Dornette, the brand new heavies, which is a funk band out of Europe." You got to hear what they're doing with Midnight at the Oasis. I'm like, what could be done with this song? So I checked it out. I'm like, oh my God. They took this song and took it to a whole nother level. And we did it. Awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. Uh, it stuck. And as a segue with New Dawn, we always opened up with California Dreaming, Midnight at the Oasis, and a song that we wrote called You're My Thing. But Midnight at the Oasis was always the mid song. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, lady, let's hear it. Okay. Ready? Ready. Midnight at the oasis Sing your camel to bed Shadows painting our faces 
traces and romance in our head have been told in our half moon and it's shining just for us let's slip off to a sand dune real soon and kick up a little dust Cause there's no need to speak I'll be your belly dancer Prancer Yeah, you can be my sheep You can be my sheep now Yes, the infamous who do loungers. How long have you been with the band? I am going, it's going on 12 years. That's amazing. That's a long time. That's a long time. Yes, it is. Well, tell me about the band. Tell us about the band. Tell us about the music. The band is, it started out as a New Orleans party band with New Orleans, authentic New Orleans music. But what has happened is, um, because band members have come and gone, horn sections has changed, uh, the flavor of the band is, is starting to change, which is a good thing, because we've implement what what's happening is um, we're we're implementing funk, mm -hmm. uh, jazz, um, you know, blues. blues, blues. The guitar player, the current guitar player, Mr. Michael Shiano, loves the Beatles, you know. Right. Um, and how many musicians? There are nine. It's a nine-piece band. Oh, that's that's huge. Yeah. Um, the the gentleman that uh, fronted the band with me, Mr. Marvin Joshua, moved back to Georgia. So now it's an eight-piece band. Okay. Um, and I, I'm the front person for now, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and Joe? Joe is the? Joe is the band leader. Okay. Yeah, Joe is the band leader. Joe Laura is yes. the band leader from Sag And Harbor. he also plays? He plays He plays electric bass. Okay. And stand-up bass. Yeah, that's And he cool. sings. Oh, that's and he awesome. Sings. He gets insecure about it, but he, he does, does sing. Okay. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So that's the deal with the hoodoos. And uh, 
We so do now it. it's been, I guess, tough this as it is for every all artists uh, oh. the last uh, year. It's but been, it's opening up. Correct? It is opening up. It is opening up. As a matter of fact, um, thank God it's opening up. Like every day or every two days, Joe's sending more dates, and I'm like, thank you, God. You know. Um, we were supposed to be in Canada in February, doing mm -hmm. a tour in Canada, and it got squashed, you know. Um, and I was really looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, well, what's next? What's out here, out here on the East we End? Have, we have on the East End for the Who Do's, I believe the first one. I'm not sure if it's the first one, because we're going to have another one prior to this. But the first one, uh, May 15th, at Stephen Talkhouse, which I'm so elated. Oh, love Stephen Talkhouse. Love Peter. Um, we also have uh, the clubhouse coming up in okay. East Hampton, cool. and we're also doing the Hexia State Park um, Music Festival again. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, and that gets covered by Newsday, and, oh, that's and awesome. but we have a ton of things. I just can't remember it all. Oh, that's great! Yeah. As well, long as I have it in my book, it's exciting for all of us. Yeah. that's that's fabulous. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear it. And they can go to the www.hoodooloungers.com and look on the website to see where we're going to be playing and. Yes, it is opening up, folks, and we are grateful as musicians. We really are. I think this is the first time, besides the interview, that, besides the interview I did with you the last time, right? The documentary that I actually, the documentary that I actually got to sing. You yes, know, right. um, the inauguration we did, but not in front of an audience. Not over over a year. It's been. That feels good, doesn't it? It feels does. Very it good. does feel good. Yes, it, it does. does I good. miss it. Yes. Well, right. you're going to be back. And it's come, happening yeah. sooner than later. Yeah, thank God. So on that note, I would like you to sing a song that speaks to all of us. People got to be free. Okay. That song was done originally by the Rascals, and the Hoodoos implemented it in their set lists. And obviously, you know, with the governmental climate, um, we felt that that song was truly appropriate. Uh, so we put it in the set list, and it's still appropriate. And it's absolutely appropriate. Yeah. It's yeah. always appropriate. Yeah. Peace in the valley. People got to be free. So easy to see. People everywhere just want to be free. Listen, please listen. It's the way it should be. People everywhere just got to be free. Uh huh, yeah. Well, you should see what a lovely, lovely world it would be if everyone learned to live together. Huh? Oh, yeah, now, whew, it seems to me it's such an easy, easy thing as you be. Why can't you and me learn to love one another? Oh, the world over, so easy to see. People everywhere just want to be free. Listen, please, listen, it's the way it should be. Peace in the valley, people got to be free. Uh-huh, yeah, come on, Sandra. Check it out. If there's a man here, who is down and needs a helping hand All it takes for you to understand And to pull him through uh, Oh yeah, now Check it out It seems to me We got to solve it individually Yeah, yeah I'll do unto you what you do to me now Oh yeah For the world over so to see people everywhere just wanna be free listen please listen it's the way it should be peace in the valley people got to be free oh, yeah. Oh, uh -huh, yeah. Woo. oh yeah 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 Dornette, yeah. it was a pleasure having you here today. Sandra, thank you. Thank you. I really mean that. I had a ball. You light me up. Yeah. You You're do. an inspiration thank to you. all of us. Thank you. You have a beautiful instrument, beautiful thank voice. Thank you. 
and we're honored to have you here with us today at the Bay Street Theater. Yeah, at Bay Street! So we want to thank Dawnette. We want to thank Jody yes. for his awesome videography and editing that will all happen. And um, we want to thank the Bay Street Theater. Yeah, Bay Street. And of course, LTV. LTV! And up next, everyone, we have Alan O'Reilly, yeah. <laughs> Director of Education and Community Outreach here from our beloved Bay Street Theater. Yeah, Stay man. tuned. Kisses. Peace.